This video is the second part of our lecture on AutoLisp and programming AutoCAD using the Virtual Lisp Editor. So last time we left off with a, an example of uh, a routine, and I'm going to start off with another one here. Uh, this is just an excerpt, it's not an entire routine, but it's going to show some stuff here. So basically what we're doing is we're creating a few different um, uh, variables here. See there's set Q, P, point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3. There's a get point command and then uh, information to the user to select the points of the triangle and then the line command point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3 followed by the close option. So you'll see that there's a one set Q function, okay, but there's three variables that it's creating. So when you use set Q, your, um, your arguments have to come in pairs. And the pairs here are point 0.1 and then the point, point 0.2, the second point, point 0.3, and the third point. So rather than having to type set Q over and over and over again, I can just do it once and then create all of my variables here. Uh, when we get into the virtual Lisp editor, you'll see how it stacks these up and makes them look like this all by itself. And then we have the command function followed by the line. It's going to draw a line from point 0.1 to point 0.2 to point 0.3 and then close that, that uh, function and make a triangle. Um, remember, anything that you type at the command line has to be in parentheses. So the word line would be the command that would be typed at the command line. And the close option here would also be typed at the command line. So it has to be in parentheses. There are some common mistakes that are made by new users of, uh, of the Lisp routines. And these are going to be listed here. <clears throat> the first one is that uh, you might misspell something. Uh, it's easy to misspell things, especially because sometimes they're not necessarily words. They're just like abbreviations. So if you misspell the function, it's going to give you the error that there's no function definition, uh, S-E-Q-T. S-E-Q-T would be like the example, you know, like it's the thing that I had misspelled. Um, if I forget to put parentheses, it's going to say I've still got an open parenthesis here and I need to close the parenthesis. So that's one way it's going to tell me. If I'm missing the quotation mark, it's saying, hey, you've got an open quotation mark. You need, you know, to finish the quotation mark. And then um, the, if I forget to put a zero in front of a decimal, remember we talked about, you know, like 0 0.25, it'll tell me that I've got an error, which is the misplaced dot on input. Um, <clears throat> if I have a symbol, you know, not holding a value, okay, like I said, set Q, ABC, and then whatever, but for whatever reason, if that, that variable isn't holding a value for some reason, it's going to give me that number P, you know, or bad argument type. So the easiest place to do all of our programming is in the virtual Lisp editor. You can use the VLIDE command to get there. So the Visual Lisp Integrated Development Environment, uh, or VLIDE, or the Virtual Lisp Editor, offers many features that make it a compelling choice over non-integrated text editor. You can use Notepad or Notepad++ or some other um, second, third party, you know, developer type of stuff, but uh, it really lacks um, of un an understanding of how to format the code and, and the virtual Lisp editor is made to go with AutoCAD. So it's really the best, best choice. Um, to open the editor, you're going to go to the manage tab on the ribbon and select the virtual Lisp editor from the application menu, or you can type VLisp or VLIDE at the command prompt. It all is the same. It's aliased all the same way. So benefits of the virtual Lisp editor. Um, there's a few things that are going to make it a whole lot easier. Uh, first of all, the, the editor remembers um, the files that you had open when you closed it and reopens them if you, if you restart the editor. Uh, the text is color coded, which may not seem like a big deal, but it really is kind of nice when you start writing some complicated text. You can see it color coded and it helps you to kind of learn what, what to goes where and that kind of thing. Um, you can double click on a parenthesis and the editor will locate the matching parenthesis if there is one and select all the intervening code so that you can see, you know, that you've got it set up correctly. So if I'm going to tab over here to Autodesk, Okay, so here I am in AutoCAD. 
I've got just a couple things on the screen here. If I want to get to the Virtual Lisp Editor, you go to the Manage tab, and you can choose the Virtual Lisp Editor here, okay? Or you can type in VLIDE, V-L-I-D-E, okay? Or you can type in Virtual Lisp, V-L-I-S-P. Either way, all three of these commands bring you to the same area here. This is the Virtual Lisp Editor. Down at the bottom, we have the Visual Lisp Console, okay? And then up at the top, you'll usually have um, an editor window, which I don't have open. But if I click on this button right here, new file, you'll see now this is where I can create code um, and save it. So this is for creating code and saving it. And this down here is the virtual Lisp console, which we're going to talk about next. So the console window allows you to perform expressions directly within the editor and see the results of those expressions kind of like doing it at the command line but you're not actually in autocad you're in the editor uh, you can perform the expressions uh, you can type in the expression at the console prompt and the results of the expression will be echoed at the console again kind of as a troubleshooting thing maybe you're trying something to make sure it's going to work you can type it in there um, when the expression sets a variable, that variable will be available in the current drawing for future use when the drawings open. So if you, you know, say set Q ABC equal to 1.75 uh, and then you go to AutoCAD, that ABC is equal to 1.75 in that session of AutoCAD. And then you can examine variables. Uh, so any variable that you've created in that drawing, you can examine it simply by typing the variable name okay so here i am i'm going to go to the virtual lisp editor give it back to me virtual lisp editor so here i am um, if i've created one i think i created one called x1 if i press enter um, okay so it, it's a selection set which it's it means it's an object that i created in autocad okay um, but if i were to create a new one if i come in here and i say okay set queue um, you know, like uh, DEW, well, let's give it a different name. We'll call it ABC and we'll set it equal to 2.75, close parentheses. It created it there. If I come, you know, if I want to, I don't remember what ABC is, so I can come back to that anytime. I can just type ABC in this virtual list console and it responds to me down here and it tells me that value that it was available. So the file window is the one at the top, and this is the place where you're going to create your code. Okay, and this is going to get a lot more complex here in, in short order because we're going to create code that we can actually save and run inside of AutoCAD. Again, some of the cool stuff here is that it color codes your input, it helps you organize it, it formats it so that it's easier to read. Um, it reacts interactively with the code as you put it in the window. So it understands what kind of code you're putting it in and that kind of stuff. Um, and then one important thing to note is anything placed after a semicolon is seen as a comment and it's ignored. So especially for new editors, um, I suggest you add some comments in there. Anything after that semicolon will be ignored. Um, and so, you know, and that's on each line. So you can add comments as you're writing it that way. Later on, if you have to go back and look at it, it's like, what the heck did I do with this? You can have a comment there saying, hey, this is what this line of code does. Next thing we want to look at is defining a new function. Um, and, and basically what that means is, is creating a new program or a new, a new command that's going to run inside of AutoCAD. Okay, that's defining a new function. Your format is defun. Okay, that means define a new function. SYM is the name of the function, and then a list, uh, the list is going to be different uh, different uh, variables that you create inside of the program, and then all of the expressions. And remember, expressions are those things like get int and set queue and all that kind of stuff. And so it all fits on one line here, but that's very simple. It's actually going to probably spread out over many, many lines. Uh, as you get more and more involved inside of uh, virtual or inside of the Lisp training here. So basically a function is kind of like a very powerful set queue. Okay, it's going to say, hey, let's create this new function. And every time I type in this new function, it's going to run all of these other things for me. 
So if function is essentially defun assigns a second through last expressions uh, in a symbol defined by the first argument. And the first argument is the name of that function. Uh, one important thing here is that if the symbol starts with C colon, the remaining characters will run uh, as if they're directly at the command prompt. So it's, it's kind of like you, you want to do this. You want to put the C colon in there and say, let's run this as a native AutoCAD command. Just makes everything easier. You could do it without it, but I don't know why you would. So looking at this sample function here, um, this is defining a new function called triangle. Okay, And the idea here is we're going to create a new function that's going to draw a triangle. Okay. Notice that right here I've got these open and close parentheses. The open and close parentheses are going to, uh, this is where we would put any variables that we would create and that kind of thing. And I've created some variables, PT1, PT2, and P3, PT3, but it's not absolutely necessary that they go in there since this is such a simple uh, function, but they have to be there, open and close parentheses. And then these are all of my expressions. And we'll talk about this print C at the end here. Notice that I've got an open parenthesis here and then open and close here, but there's no close parentheses here. So it's going to balance these out for us that this one's going to go here and then that one's going to go there. So it's, it's open and then open, close, but then it's open, close, open, close, and then close. And so it, it balances it all out for us. So now here's, I'm going to go ahead and type this in. I'll go back to uh, the virtual lisp editor here. Okay, so I'm going to create this new one and I'm just going to start by opening parentheses. I'm going to say define a new function and I'm going to call it triangle. Uh, but I want it to run from AutoCAD, so I'm going to say C colon triangle. Um, be careful that you're not using a command that already exists in AutoCAD. I wouldn't want to define a new function called line or rectangle or arc or something like that. Open and close parentheses. So now because I don't have a second close parenthesis, when I press enter to go to the second line, it's going to automatically indent for me. And I can say, okay, let's now let's define these new, um, these new variables. So I'm going to say set Q, which is set equal. And then the variable name is going to be PT1, like point 0.1. And I want to get a point. I want to tell the user to get a point. Okay. And then the message that I want to give to the user is to specify the first point of a triangle. Okay, close quotations, those have to be balanced, close quote, okay. Uh, and so now that's gonna create point one, but now I wanna I want to do this again, but I don't want to have to type all that in. So I'm just going to copy this. So I'll say copy, control C. Now when I press enter, notice that it indented because it's saying, hey, he must want to create some new variables here. So I can just paste this in and I can call this one 0.2. Okay. Um, and then specify the second point of a triangle. Okay. And then... Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste this again, 0.3 this time, and the third point of a triangle, okay? And now that I'm done creating all of those variables, I'll say close quotation mark. Notice how, watch when I do that again, up by the, look up by the set queue, it, it, it kind of reinforces that one. So close quotation, see how it reinforces that one. Now when I press enter, it takes me back so that I'm lined up with that first set queue. And I can say, okay, now let's run a command. Okay, and the command is going to be the line command. So that has to go in quotation marks. And the lines that I want to draw are from point one, point one to point two to point three. And then I want to close. So I'm going to put that in quotation marks, okay, because that's something that I would type at the command line. And then I'm going to add another one in here that's new to us. It's, it's print C. Now remember um, that AutoCAD always tries to return 
uh, a value to the user and this printc will kind of prevent that from happening and then I'm just going to back up here and put in oops, put in my close quotation marks so now I've created this new function called triangle I've tailed it to three points it's going to run it and, and all I'm going to see at the command line is, you know, specify the first point, specify the second point, specify the third point. It's going to draw the command for me. In order to get it to AutoCAD, you come right up here to this load active edit window. When I click on this, it's going to load it into AutoCAD. So it loaded that into AutoCAD. Uh, notice down here that there's no, there's no errors or anything for me. And then when I click on this button, it takes me to AutoCAD. So now I can type in triangle, okay, and notice that it comes up as a native AutoCAD command, and it says, okay, specify the first point of the triangle, specify the second point of the triangle, specify the third point of the triangle, it draws the triangle, exits the command. Now this wasn't super user friendly because it's not, you know, showing me a rubber band or anything on where those go. Okay, so if we were to modify this just a little bit, come back in here and I change this now so it I specify point one but now when I'm specifying specifying point two if I want a rubber band in there to say hey you're going from point one to point two I'm gonna put another uh, identifier in here I'm gonna say point one oops not point X but point one so now it's saying hey when I get this second point start measuring from point one and now when I get that third point I want to start measuring from point two so now I'll just reload that back into AutoCAD. When I switch to AutoCAD here, and I say let's run that triangle command again. Notice it says specify my first point, so when I pick, notice now that I get a rubber band, okay? Now it doesn't actually draw the line, but at least it gives me a clue of where my first point was and my second point was. So that's kind of a, a nice little function that it gives me there, just by adding that point one, point two. And then that print C just rem just at the bottom of it just makes it say command. It doesn't have any other messages or or any nils or anything like that that might be in there. So there are times when you'll want to manipulate the system settings to enhance the way the program runs. Okay, you might want to change a, a, a the radius of a circle. You might want to change the the radius on a fillet. Um, you might want to change a hatch pattern. Those are all variables inside of AutoCAD. It's a general rule that if you're going to change something to the way you want it, you should probably first store the original setting, change it to the what you want, and then use it, and then change it back to the way the program was uh, before it was run. I call that playing neatly. You think about if you have kids and you take your kids over to say your brother's house to play with his with their nephew or with their cousins um <clears throat> you know the you you come in and you, you walk in the house and the house is all clean and the kids rooms are nice and neat and then the kids play all night and then it's time to go home you know it's it's only polite to go in and have the kids clean up the room and set it up the way it was beforehand so that you're not leaving a big mess and that's kind of the same idea here when you write Lisp codes, you don't want to go in and make a mess out of the way everything's set up. You want to take a picture of the of the room before you start to play and then play. But then the last thing you do is you put everything back the way it was, whether it's a, a fillet radius or a hatch pattern or a scale or something like that. And we'll talk about how to do that. Um, almost everything in AutoCAD has a variable associated with it. Like I say, there's there's hundreds of them. And if you don't know which variable you need, you can look in the AutoCAD help file under the command topic set bar, and you'll find the list of all of the variables and what they do. And like I say, there's there's dozens and dozens and dozens of them. It could take you all day to go through them. So if you if you want to help, you know you can you can look in and maybe do a little internet searching as well. So here's another one that we could write that is a sample uh, zero fillet command, and what it does is it uh, creates um, it takes two lines and it fillets them with a zero radius but it's got an example of that playing neatly here so say define a new function the C colon allows it to run as a native AutoCAD command and then rather than typing in zero fillet I just call it FZ and then open and close parentheses you know that's just for now it's just to keep it easy so I'm gonna say set Q I'm gonna create 
two um, variables here, one called CME, okay, and there's a, there's a variable inside of AutoCAD called the command echo. And what that does is it um, takes everything that you type and echoes it to the command line. Um, and then the second we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the existing fillet radius and we're going to put that inside of an FR1. So we're getting the current value for the command echo. We're holding it as CME. We're getting the current value for the fillet radius and we're holding it FR1. Then after we get those two values, we um, need to come in here and, oh, I left a line of code out on this. I need to turn the command echo off, okay, which I didn't do, so I'll do that in a minute. Then we're going to set the, the variable fillet radius to zero, fillet rad. So what it, maybe it was set at 1.5 here, but I want it to have a zero radius. Okay, so I change it to zero, and then I say, hey, fillet, let's, let's run the command fillet, and then pause and pause. So pause just tells the, the, the computer, hey, wait for the user to give it input, and then wait for the user to give it input. After we're done, after you know, and you know how the fillet command works, I say pause, right? I pick my first object, I say pause, I pick my second object, it fillets them, it exits the command. Now that we're done, I can go back and I can clean up the room. So I can set var, I can change that fillet brad back to whatever it was when we started, and I can turn that command echo back on, because again, I forgot to turn it off here. And then print c just makes things nice and neat when we when it's time to leave and we want to clean. So if I come back here, uh, let me get rid of a couple things here, and then I'll say, okay, let's go to the virtual lisp editor. Oops. Ah, come on. Okay. So, okay, give it to me. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to just get rid of this one because I don't really want that one anymore. Don't need to save any changes on this one. So if I want to say, let's create a new one. So this one is going to be define a new function. And oops, define a new function. And we're going to call it C colon. Again, that makes it run as a native AutoCAD command. And we'll call it FZ so that I don't have to type in fill it zero or something like this. Open and close parentheses. Press enter to get to the second line. So now I want to create two variables. I'm going to say set Q or set equal. The first one is CME, so the command echo value. And I want to get that variable uh, for command echo. And it, because that's something that I'm typing at the command line, I need to include that in quotation marks, close parentheses. I want to do it again for the second one. So I'm going to call it FR1, my fillet radius one. And I'm going to say get the variable and this variable is going to be the fillet rad. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And so now I've, I've got, I've captured my current, I've taken a picture, uh, I've captured the current environment, I've taken a picture of the objects, you know, of the room, my kids can now start getting in there and playing. So now, now that it's gonna, we're gonna start playing, um, one of the things I wanna do is I wanna play quietly right i don't want all of what the kids are doing coming back and showing up on the command line so i'm going to say now set that variable um command echo to um zero which turns it off okay and then i also want to set the variable fillet rad to zero as well. So that whatever it was, maybe it was, you know, like one and a half or two or three or something like that. Now it's going to be zero. So now that I've set those two, I can say, okay, now let's come in and let's run the command. Fill it. And I want the computer, after it says fill it, I want it to pause for the user input so that it can let the person choose the first one, pause for the user input so that the person can choose the second one, close that parenthesis, 
so that it's done with the command and it fillets it. And now we want to change that fillet radius back to what it was before. So we'll say, okay, set that variable for uh, fillet rad. Oops, quotation marks. And we want to set it back to what it was before, which is fr1. And then we want to do the same thing for the command echo. And I want to change it back to what it was before. So that's CME, close parentheses. Okay. And now just to keep it all clean and nice and neat, we put in the print C, which keeps it, you know, from giving us extra stuff in the line that we don't need. And then I'll say my close parentheses. So now that's all good to go. Um, when I load it into AutoCAD, everything was loaded. I didn't get any auto or I didn't get any messages down here saying it didn't work. So now if I were to come in here and I say, okay, let's just draw a couple of lines. Oh, come on. Line, so I draw a line here and then I draw a line there like that, right? So if I come in and I say, let's just run the regular fillet command first. So I say fillet. Um, notice that here it says my radius is zero, okay? So if I change the radius to say 1.5, enter, now I pick my first one, I pick my second one, and it fillets it with a radius of 1.5. Okay, everybody's all happy with that. So now if I do this again, okay, but this time I'll use the FZ. So I say FZ, which is my new command that I created. It says, and it's not giving me the command to specify the first point because I told it to turn off the command echo, so I have to know what it does. So I pick the first one, I pick the second one. Notice that it wrote it fills it with a rotate or it fillets it with a radius of zero, but it also set it back to what it was before. So now if I just come up and I use the regular fillet command, notice down here now that the radius is actually set to one and a half. So it automatically set it back. It played neatly. Now press F2, you can see what happened here. When I ran my FZ, it did it all quietly. Okay. Um, it didn't didn't show anything like when I ran the fillet command here, specify the, well, let's see, when I did it here, you know, it says mode trim and so on, select the first object, select the first object, select the second object. I didn't get that. I didn't get any of that message there. So just be aware that if you turn, um, if you turn that stuff off, you know, your, your command echo off, you're going to lose some of those. So you kind of have to plan for it. And we can look at how to fix that in, in future videos as well. So command line versions. Some commands such as layer or hatch launch a dialog box or a ribbon to allow the user an easy way to manipulate information. Um, think about the hatch command. You know, you, you type in hatch or you pick the hatch button and the ribbon changes and it gives you all the tools that you need for modifying hatches. But when you're running a Lisp routine, you don't usually want the dialog box to change. You just want it to do it. You don't want to have something popping up and distracting the user and it, it might not work properly. So we don't want to use dialog boxes. We don't want to use the, the, uh, the context sensitive ribbon uh, during Lisp routines. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to place a dash before the command and that will invoke the command line version of the command. Um, so, it, you know, there's a difference between, say, hatch and dash hatch, and there's a difference between layer and dash layer. So if you, if you want to, what you need to do is you need to practice that. If you want to add a hatch to something, you need to type dash hatch at the command line and go through the process of setting up the hatch. You know, so for example, if I was going to set a hatch, I would type dash hatch, and then I'm going to change, I'm going to choose my pattern and the scale and the rotation angle. I'm going to select my objects and I'm going to press enter and it's going to get it all done. So I suggest you go through that process and write it all down so that when you write your Lisp routine, it, it knows how to select those things um, and, and knows how you're going to do it. A couple other things you might want to know is how to create a selection set. You might want to be able to select objects and add them to a selection set inside of a Lisp routine. 
And if you want to do that, you're going to use ssget. Okay, that's selection set get. So the format for this is ssget. So open parentheses ssget, then the mode string, and then a couple of point commands, point list, and filter list. So this is, can be a very complex function, but we're gonna we're, or, or not function. Well, it could be very complex, but we're gonna use it pretty simply. And I'm gonna show you a couple examples here of how to do it rather simply, um, just for the sake of selecting objects. Okay. Um, if you want to know more about it, just go to Google and type in ssget lisp and it'll give you lots and lots of, of applications and even some videos and stuff about that. Uh, for most applications, you only need the mode string. Okay, so the, the ssget and then the mode string itself. Um, there are several mode strings in ssget. The most common ones are following here. So the plus dot allows the user to select objects with the cursor. Okay, the C allows the user to invoke a crossing window. Uh, the L selects the last object added to the drawing database. The P selects the most recent selection set, not the most recent object created, but the most recent selection set. And then W invokes a window. And all of these can be added together uh, or you could, you could use them individually but they do need to go in quotation marks, kind of like something that you would type at the command line. So what that might look like, uh, if I wanted to select something, <clears throat> if I come in here and I say, okay, uh, let me close this one. Let me just do this, I'm gonna create a new one. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, let's do an SS get. Okay. So it's saying create a selection set. And let me back up a little bit here. I'm going to open parentheses and say set Q. Uh, so set equal maybe like X1. Okay, so I'm creating a variable. I'm calling it SS get or X1. And then, and then what I want to do is I want to be able to select an object on the screen. So in quotation marks, I'm going to say plus dot. Okay, so that's going to say you know, like the plus, think of that as your as your crosshairs, okay? I wanna be able to select something. And a couple other ones that you might want to do are like uh, an E colon. Uh, so that's gonna be like, it's gonna limit me to selecting just one object, for example. So if I close parenthesis on that and close parenthesis on that, um, when I load this now, okay, notice now it's, oh, I've got a malformed string on input. So what did I do here? That means I type something in incorrectly. Um, let me do a, oh, it's not E colon, it's colon E. So colon E. So now if I try this again and I say load this, mirror, uh, there's still a malform string on input. Okay, one more try here. Oh, did I? Oh, I, oh, I know what I did. I forgot my quotation marks. Darn it. Okay, so plus dot, and then I wanted to pick one. So it's gonna be E colon, and then my second quotation marks. That was my problem there. So I can load that. Too few arguments. Um, One more try. Oh, okay, so it's working now. So now what this is doing is it's saying SS get, um, it's gonna allow me to pick, and the E is gonna allow me to pick one at a time, and then S is a single object. So if I were to jump over to AutoCAD, which it's not gonna let me do now, if I can tab over. So now notice it says select object, so I can pick one object. As soon as I pick it, picks it for me and it's all it's ready to go so that kind of a, a simple way to do it um, not a great way to show you how to do it outside of a, uh, a, a list so let me come back here um, for example 
this this might be a little bit more it's not still not complete but if i'm inside of something here let's say i say command line uh, and i'm connecting points one and two so it draws a line from point one to point two and then it ends the line and now it say hey set q line one ss get l so the last thing created was this line so it's going to hold this line as an object and it's going to call it as line one as a val or as a variable then I repeat it, I draw another line from point two to point three, close that one out and set Q line two, okay? So now this line is called line two. The first line was called line one. I can say fill it, command fill it, line one to line two, it automatically fillets them and it'll exit the command. So that's one way that you can use SS get inside of a, uh, inside of a, a routine. So finally, this all comes down to practice. You need to practice the sample Lisp routines that are included in Canvas. Okay, there's a couple of them in Canvas in, in, the, in, the, in the information given to you there. You need to practice those. Um, you need to, you know, when you make mistakes, you need to go through and figure out what it is that you did wrong. You need to practice writing easy routines of your own design. You know, just practice drawing a circle and drawing a line and doing some other things just so that you can get used to how it's supposed to work. If you want some more help, you can use the support and learning tab at autodesk.com to help you find more information on writing Lisp routines. Um, uh, there's lots of information on Google, of course. Um, Lee Ambrosius has a lot of good stuff. Uh, there's, there's three or four very quality guys out there that I can recommend to you if you want me to. And then finally, contact me with questions. If you're having trouble, send me your code. Tell me what you're trying to do. I'll try to troubleshoot it for you and figure out where you're going wrong. I probably won't tell you the exact answer that you want, but I'll tell you maybe where you can find the answer and give you a clue on maybe what you're not doing correctly. So good luck with this. Uh, start work on the on the two assignments, the, the, the bullseye and the other one and uh, the the what do we call it? Text cloud. Do your best on those. Um, again, contact me with any questions you have. I'll be ready to help you as soon as I can.